Hi, everyone. Welcome to Rico's Reading Room. Today, I'm going to read a book about a famous mathematician. Enjoy. The Boy Who Loved Math: The Improbable Life of Paul Erdos, by Deborah Heligman. Pictures by Le Yuan Fan. There once was a boy who loved math. He grew up to be one of the greatest mathematicians who ever lived, and it all started with a big problem. Paul Erdos lived in Budapest, Hungary, with his mama. Mama loved Paul to infinity. Paul loved Mama to infinity too. When he was three, Mama had to go back to work as a math teacher. She didn't want anything bad to happen to Paul, so she left him with the one person she knew would take very good care of him. She left him with Frolin. Frolin had too many rules. That was the problem. Paul hated rules. He hated to be told when to sit still, when to eat, when to go to sleep. What could Paul do? He couldn't exactly solve the problem, but Paul knew that when summer came, Mama would be home with him all day, one hundred percent of the time. So he taught himself to count, really high. Then he figured out how many days it would be until summer vacation. It made him feel much better to know the number. So Paul kept counting, and thinking about numbers. One day, when he was four, Paul asked a visitor when her birthday was. She told him, "What year were you born?" He asked. She told him, "What time?" She told him. Paul thought for a moment. Then he told her how many seconds she had been alive. Paul liked that trick. He did it often. Paul played with numbers. He added them together and subtracted them. One day, he subtracted a bigger number from a smaller number. The answer was less than zero. How could a number be less than zero? Mama told him numbers below zero are called negative numbers. Paul thought that was so cool. Now he knew for sure he wanted to be a mathematician when he grew up, but first he had to tackle another big problem. School. Mama sent him to school, of course, when it was time, but Paul and school were not a good match. Paul could not sit still for long, so he got up and ran around the classroom. But that was against the rules. Oh, how Paul hated rules! How could he solve this problem? Paul told Mama he didn't want to go to school anymore, not for one more day, for zero days. He wished he could take days away, negative school days. He pleaded with Mama to stay home. Luckily, Mama was a warrior. She worried about germs a lot. She worried Paul could catch dangerous germs from the children at school. So she helped him solve his problem. She said he could stay home with Frolin. But even Frolin was better than school, maybe five hundred times better. Frolin and Mama did everything for Paul. They cut his meat and buttered his bread and got him dressed and tied his shoes. That was great. It meant Paul could think about numbers all day. Numbers were his best friends. He could always depend on numbers to be there and behave in the same way. Numbers followed rules. He didn't like rules in life, but he liked rules in numbers. And so Paul turned seven, then eight, then nine. And when Paul was ten, he fell in love. He fell in love with prime numbers. Prime numbers are special. They can't be divided evenly. A prime number can be divided only by itself and one. The first prime number is two, but that's the only even prime number. 
All the other prime numbers are odd. The numbers three, five, and seven are prime, but not all odd numbers are prime. Nine isn't prime because you can multiply three by three and get nine. Paul had a lot of questions about prime numbers. Do they go on forever? Is there a pattern to them? Why is it that the higher up you go, the farther apart the prime numbers are? Paul loved to think about prime numbers. When he got older, Paul wanted to go to high school. He liked school a million times better now. He made many friends, people his age who loved math and were really good at it too. Paul and his friends did math together all over Budapest, but Paul was the best. He loved being at the top in math and at the top of towers and mountains and buildings too. He thought about math, whatever he was doing, wherever he was. By the time Paul was twenty, he was already famous around the world for his math. People called him the magician from Budapest. But he still did not know how to do his laundry, or cook his food, or butter his bread. That was not a problem. He still left at home, and Mama still did everything for him. But then one day, when Paul was twenty-one, some mathematicians invited him to go to England to work on his math. Could he survive out in the world on his own? He rode the train by himself. He met the mathematicians. They all went to dinner. Everyone else talked and ate. But Paul stared at his bread. He stared at his butter. He didn't know how to butter his bread. Finally, he took his knife, put some butter on it, and spread it on his bread. Phew! He did it. It wasn't so hard, he said. Even though he could now butter his own bread, Paul soon realized that he didn't finish the world in a regular way. He wasn't the kind of person to cook or clean or drive a car or have a wife and children. He wasn't the kind of person to live in one place and have one job. He was the kind of person to do math all of the time, and he still didn't like to follow rules. So he invented his own way to live. Here is what he did. Paul would get on an airplane with two small suitcases filled with everything he owned, a few clothes, and some math notebooks. He might have twenty dollars in his pocket, or less. He flew from New York to India and to Los Angeles. He flew across the world, from Toronto to Australia. I've no home, he declared. The world is my home. And wherever he went. When he got there, the same thing would happen. A mathematician would meet him and take him home. The mathematician and Paul worked on math. Paul played with the mathematician's epsilons. That's what Paul called children, because an epsilon is a very small amount in math. And just as Mama had done, friends all over the world took care of Paul. They did his laundry. And cooked his food, and cut open his grapefruit, and paid his bills. Now Paul wasn't the easiest house guest. He made messes, big messes, like the time he got impatient and opened a tomato juice carton by stabbing it with a knife. And he often woke up his host at four o'clock in the morning and said, "My brain is open." That meant he was ready to do math. He wanted to do math about nineteen hours a day, every single day. Nineteen hours times seven days a week equals one hundred and thirty-three hours a week. One time, when he was a young man, he broke a rule that got him into big trouble. He climbed over a fence to look at a radio tower. He got arrested. The police thought he was a spy. The FBI thought he was a spy, so they spied on him for years after that. Why did friends all over the world put up with him?
and take care of him. Call him Uncle Paul and love him. Because Paul Erdos was a genius, and he shared his brain. He helped people with their math problems and gave them more problems to do. Plus, he was a math matchmaker. He introduced mathematicians all over the world to one another so they could work together. Paul knew that mathematician plus mathematician plus mathematician equals more and better math. Paul and his friends did so much great math. They worked in math called number theory, combinatorics, the probabilistic method, and set theory. Paul showed his friends how to do math in new and better ways. He even started some new kinds of math. Some of the math Paul and his friends worked on gave us better computers and better search engines on the computer, also better codes for spies to use. Uncle Paul was generous with his brain, and his money too. Whatever money he had, he gave away. He gave money to poor people, and he offered prize money for unsolved math problems. Even when Paul got very old, he still did math. He did math while he played chess. He did math while he drank coffee, lots and lots of coffee. He thought about math while he played ping pong with his best friends. Paul said he never wanted to stop doing math, and he didn't. To stop doing math, Paul said, was to die. So Paul left this world while he was at a math meeting. All over the world, mathematicians still talk about and love Uncle Paul, even people who never met him. They talk about their Erdos number. If you did math with Paul. You get an Erdos number of one. If you worked with someone who worked with Paul, your Erdos number is two. People are so proud of their Erdos numbers. A long time ago, there was a boy who loved math. Numbers were his best friends. He grew up to be the man who loved math. Numbers and people were his best friends. Paul Erdos had no problem with that. The end. Thanks so much for listening to my reading. I hope you loved it. Please hit the subscribe button and have a wonderful day.